All right, guys, Georgia Jim. This is part two of the escort review. Uh, we worked on some green and blue belt locks on this video. And uh, of these nine locks you see, we were only able to pick these four on top. And I'll talk about those in just a second. Uh, we could not pick the American 1100 because the tensioner would slip like that and that spreads the core out in the top stack. The, the pins stop binding once you spread that core like that. So that was pretty frustrating. I even tried it on a different 1100 and if this tensioner was a little thicker to prevent that, it would uh, probably have been helpful. So we weren't able to pick the 1100. Uh, the 7240 suffered quite a bit from this giant tensioner taking up all the room. You had to go directly under the pins and then when you had high pins in the back, trying to get those without oversetting the lower pins was uh, just an exercise in futility and frustration. Uh, the Dorma 3003 was even a worse example. Um, we can see how much room in the keyway is just taken up there. And you can see with the bidding on that, it was just uh, not going to happen. There's no way to get these higher lift pins without disturbing the lowers. Uh, with the Asa Hospitality, again, tensioner, it was the biggest issue. I won't even blame the hooks because I don't think there's any hook that I would have used with this tensioner that would have made it work. And we can see the bidding for the Asa here. So, you know, this giant tensioner is one of the biggest hindrances of trying to pick. And the 7240, I'm sorry, the 7640, this is an 8 pin lock. I could not set pin 8 uh, or 7 without messing up pin 6. <clears throat> and while this is a giant keyway and there was plenty of room, uh, it not being a very snug fit in the lock, uh, dealing with counter rotation I was dropping pins quite a bit so overall very disappointed with uh, this tool the biggest thing to take away from the locks we were able to pick is all of these locks had very open keyways uh, even the locks with very gentle bidding the Schleg Everest um, I struggled to set pin 6 um, even using the little cheat that I use for the rib pick where we stick a uh, tensioner in there to override the check pin uh, just getting under the pins with this giant tensioner was just uh, really made things more difficult than they had to be uh, the 410 lotto was actually probably the easiest just because of the keyway shape it just kept the tension out of the way and the hooks were thin enough or, sh or short enough anyway that I could go directly under the key pins so pretty much everything that I was able to pick I was either able to go directly under the key pins like here and here and here or I had just enough room to wiggle the pick under the pins without oversetting anything so anything with hard bidding or uh, harder keyways it was just a no-go. Um, and again, that just goes back, in my opinion, to the lack of thought that was put into this tool. If you watch Lock Noob's review on this, he basically had the same critiques as I did. He's probably a lot more nicer than I am about this, but you know, he recommended better hooks. He recommended more tension options. And my thing about that was Sparrows works very closely with him. Why did they not send him one of these and get his feedback and thoughts before they released it? Why wait? Why not get anybody to check things out and give you actual feedback? There are so many companies that do that in Locksport. They have people that they trust and they give tools to to test out and give them feedback on what works and what doesn't. And either Sparrows didn't do that, didn't listen, or just didn't care. So, uh, in my opinion, this is an extremely limited tool, especially with what's included. You can, if you wanted to carry a little wallet with all the different tension options, you know, you could do that. 
in my opinion, if I'm gonna do that, why wouldn't I just carry an Echelon or a Tuxedo or a Kickstart or a Genesis? I mean, if I'm gonna have this much in my pocket, I might as well have a pick set with far more tools. So to me, this is $95 down the drain. It's uh, even having all these extra tension options that will not fix the issue with the pick selection. And why would I want to buy an expansion for this when I've already spent this much already? You know what I mean? It's just there are better options for far cheaper, and I don't recommend this tool. And it's not because I'm trying to crap on sparrows or anything like that. There are good sparrows products, but this, in my opinion, wasn't one of them. It's uh, just very poorly thought out. So uh, if you want to buy a jackknife, Find one that has at least top of the keyway options. I know the multi pick one doesn't have it, the southern specialties doesn't have it, and you're going to have the same issues as you're going to have with this. So, you know, personally, my opinion, the uh, slim pickings for a jackknife, the uh, Swick, the Moki uh, Lockmaster Edition something like that where you get uh, top of the keyway options are far better options than this and they're all cheaper than this so the most expensive uh, one of the less well equipped tools on the market and also just one other thing I'll note I know Sandman mentioned the weight the weight in my hand isn't an issue but when you're trying to jiggle test and you're trying to check pin states it is noticeable that you uh, when you have this much weight pushing on the back end of the pick. So if you have it like that in your hand and you want to bounce the pick, it's so heavy that it's just going to sit. You can't really get any uh, flex like that. So all in all, like I said, I'm very disappointed in it. Um, I was hoping they could do a little better than this. And I know they have expansions planned, but, uh, after this experience, I don't think I would buy anything, or at least anything related to this. I wouldn't put more money into this. So that's uh, my thoughts and the rest of the video. I have video showing that I was able to pick these, and you can see how the pick performs. So if you're interested in that, uh, go ahead and keep watching. All right, thanks. All right, so we got the Schlag Everest here. Uh, this is six top pins with a little check pin. I'm gonna use the same trick I used for the rev pick just to keep everything fair, where we just use a piece of wiper insert and shove it in the bottom of the keyway to defeat the check pin. We can see the bidding on this key, nothing's really extreme. Uh, so we'll see what the, uh, <clears throat> how the uh, escort does with that. All right this giant tensioner I'm really getting a lot of the keyway eaten up especially with that uh, small little piece of uh, wiper in the bottom just adds more to that so I will be struggling around that with this uh, short hook so all right make sure that's in okay one's loose two three pin four if I get it get past this tensioner and get it up All right, there's pin four nice click on it five trying to get pin six up I think we may have got it five four let's see if anything else is binding now one two three I don't think six is set. We dropped something. I'm just going to reset. One, two, three, four is binding. Let's get it up. Four, five. There's pin six. One is good now. Two, 
three. Bank check one. Okay. I had to wiggle that little wiper a little bit, but see we got it open. And again, just because of this tensioner, we're really uh fighting for room. Alright, so we got the Master 410 Lotto. This is uh <clears throat> six pins, five spools, one serrated. Um basically gonna have to go directly under the pins to pick this, so one is loose. Two, three, four. I can get six set. I can't even get counter rotation on it yet. Okay. One is counter rotating. There's one. Checking two, nothing. Three is counter rotating. Four is counter rotating. Five is already set since we have a false set. We wouldn't have that if the standard or the serrated wasn't already set. And I'm more or less having to try to pull the hook back to get the lift I need on pin five. I'm sorry, pin six. All right. One, that did, okay, one, I get under two now, there we go, so, again, kind of a struggle, uh, especially with that shorter hook, you can't work from the side and lift, you just don't have the lift you need, the tensioner really didn't come into play on this one. So there's the 410 Lotto. All right, so we got the Lockwood 334. This is just the st uh, steel body versus the uh, brass. All right. Pin one, two, trying to get two all the way up. Want to raise all the way up for me yet? Yeah. Come on, one. There we go. One, two. Three. Four. I'm sorry. That was two and one. I'm just going back and checking to see what I dropped. Let me just reset that. One. Two, just kind of rotating. Get one up there now. Okay, there's two, one and two, three. The false set got a little deeper. I think that's good. Four. Five. And see what we dropped. We dropped one. There we go. And again, we can see the bidding on this was pretty forgiving for a short hook. We had a max lift, almost a max, and then some lower cuts, and then a Pretty much a zero on five so uh, kind of gentle bidding for the Lockwood 334 so there we go all right so we got the goal s here this is a five pin japanese lock it has some spools and some light counter milling to get past all right it's been one two Pin four. Some will click on five. One, two. Dropping something, trying to get three. Four. Pin 
and six. One is still good. Two fell. Trying to get two up. One, two, three fell. Four fell. Five. One is good. Two. Three. Four. Gotta figure out what we're missing. One is good. Two. Three. Four. Drop five. There's five, four. There we go, it's pin three. All right, so that wasn't too bad. Um, the keyway is open enough to let us still pick from the warding, but more or less I was still going directly under the pins. They're just that high up in this lock, so. All right, there's the goal S.